And now, let's get into After Effects. Hey, hello and welcome to this really fun tutorial by Promotion. Because today I'm going to show you all you need to know about Wonder Dynamics and a little bit more. And for all of you who have not heard of Wonder Dynamics before, with this tool you can upload your recorded footage, select the character and a few moments later you have your converted footage ready to have fun with. And this is about where I left in my last tutorial and the link is in the description. Today I'm showing you some more advanced stuff. No, really, only watch this if you want your jaws to drop, like like a lot. First we are going to create the skater shot, where we transform the character inside Blender and comp it back in within After Effects. And next we will do the same thing in an even more advanced way and I will show you the workflow they used for the film The Creator to have CG elements that fit seamlessly into practical film footage. Hey, and as a bonus, we will also take a look at how to completely transform a shot into a full CG one and all of this within After Effects. And hey, this is huge. So, well, maybe I'll just repeat this. We will film ourselves, use that motion to create a 3D character and animate a fully 3D environment around it and all within After Effects with no plugins at all. Super excited. And a little secret here. No one has ever done that workflow before. So what you see here will probably blow your minds. Let's jump right into this and start simple and easy. Here you see me doing a super cool board trick with a green screen suit on. And I will show you why I did that in just a second. I filmed it with no green screen, with green clothes, as well as full green screen with a green hat thing. This is called pre-production. So now, after recording this, I know exactly how I would film it. <laughs> now, let's go to Wonder Dynamics and drag and drop that shot in. And no worries, we will take a look at all those advanced features in the next shot within this tutorial too. So let's scan the frame so it detects an actor and now again just drag and drop the character you want to have onto the selection. And I chose this one here called Brainbot as he has this really nice metal skeleton, which would fit perfect, as I also want to have that negative space, meaning some parts where you could see through. Now we can choose the format and all the assets we want to have. For that scene, I want to have the clean plate as well as the blender file. And well, let's do this. And all of this happens in the cloud. So you can work on other stuff while waiting or even directly create the next shot. This is what we are going to do. So this time, as promised, I want to go advanced and I choose the creator shot. That gives me some more options and finer detail to choose from. For example, I can align the character to the neck as I want to replace the head later on. But I could also align to the feet, for example. By default, I directly have better estimation for face and hands, which also includes fingers. Perfect. I have feet lowering and feet contact already enabled for better crown contact. Okay, let's also choose our settings here and make sure to include the blender scene as well and click on start processing. And last but not least, let's do it a third time and this is simply a wider shot. So I'm completely visible within the frame and we will use that for our full 3D CG super advanced final shot. Okay, and in the meantime, our first shot has finished. So on this one, let's download the clean plate, which is the same shot, but it tried its best to remove me from the shot. And I want the Blender scene as well. And let's directly open Blender. And oh, that does not look like expected. Well, honestly, I expected that because in our downloads, we also get a text file that includes a link to the missing textures that we see here in pink. So you only have to download them once and not for each shot. Clever. In Blender, simply go to File, 
external data and find missing files. Now select your folder and voila, we are good to go. And as you are probably new to Blender, I'll try to make this as simple as possible. So over here you have the outline where we have all our assets and by simply enabling and disabling them, you can see all the different elements. And whoa, this is just super intense and super detailed. And I'm simply going to delete the parts inside of this metal skeleton so we can see through it. Maybe also some parts of his head. You can delete or simply hide them here. So they are not visible when rendering. And speaking of rendering, Easy. For that, click on this icon, the render properties. And you have to understand that there are two settings. First, the viewport, so meaning what you see within Blender. And after that, the real render settings. So you can set it low for fast preview in the viewport and high in the render settings. But hey, I just leave this as default and by hitting F12, you get a preview of the current rendered frame. Hey, and also interesting to know for all you newbies, this camera icon lets you see the shot through the camera perspective. The button beneath our render properties lets us define the render output. Here we can set the resolution and define our output folder. And once done, simply go to render and render animation. And let's directly jump into After Effects. So let's drag in our clip as well as the clean plate. And we can also import the rendering now, which is probably not finished, but we can already import what's there. So click on the first image and make sure to import the sequence. Now right click on this and set it to 25 frames per second because I shot all the footage in 25 frames per second. Great. This could already be finished, but hey, I want to do a little bit of compositing here because I knew that the feed could be a bit tricky with the board interaction. So the green screen really helps because now we can add the footage on top. Key out the green and create a mask around the part. And now the robot's feet are inside the shoes and I would call this one done. Okay, next up is our creator shot. Let's also open the original in After Effects, but this time not the clean plate that was created automatically. You also want to learn something, right? So, therefore, let's create the clean plate on our own, because I think After Effects does an even better job in creating the clean plate. So, let's open up the Content Aware Fill tool. And this does what it says. It fills out parts of the image, meaning it creates a clean plate for us. But we need to have an alpha channel as input for the tool. So. We could roll me out in the shot, but as we work smart and not hard, let's use the alpha mat. Well, as alpha mat. Now we have me rolled out and we can simply click on fill layer and let After Effects do its thing. And after a few moments, we have a super cool shot without me in it. Okay, great starting point. But let's do a bit more preparation here. I want the robot to wear my leather jacket. So let's roto this out real quick with the roto brush tool. And I found that this, even it's 10,000 times faster than traditional roto, still can be annoying when being creative. Hmm. So I tricked myself. I cut the footage in 25 frames portions because one of those I could do in about one or two minutes. Then I did some fun compositing or tested the just created portion and went on to the next 25 frames. So in that way, I did not get bored and kept my creativity and motivation at a high level all the time. Okay, we have everything prepped in After Effects. This time I rendered a few different versions, the body without the head, only the head, and once only the hands. So I could layer them within After Effects. The jacket is above the robot, but the head is above the jacket and so on. And yes, that was indeed way easier than expected. And while doing that, I totally understood Gareth Edwards' workflow of shooting it without green screen or markers, as I was able to find the best or simplest or most pleasant version in post-production. If I would have had markers on me and the jacket for the motion capture, 
I could not use my jacket, for example. Also, the decision that I wanted to have my robot hands came in post-production. And, for example, rotoing the jacket took way less time than painting out tracking markers. And now, let's finally take a look at James Cameron's workflow. Remember, I have filmed me again. Full body. And hey, believe me or not, the camera work is really not important here, as we will have full creative freedom in just a second. I download the Blender file again and open it in Blender. And now you see that we do not only have the character in here, but also the camera that is perfectly tracked, as well as a point cloud for the whole environment, so we could easily place our own CG background assets in there and call it a day. Well, we could. But I want your jaws to drop even further. Because we are just in Blender to save it as a GLB file here. Nothing more. Just close Blender. Uh, does that mean that we do like, uh, like everything in After Effects? Yes. It does mean exactly that. We do all animation, camera, 3D lighting, rendering within After Effects. No kidding. In After Effects, let's drop it in. And... If you have not watched my tutorial on how to animate a dinosaur in your living room, you should definitely check it out now, because there I am explaining all of this as well as all the basics. We have our robot in here, and in the animation options, we find our motion capture data. Perfect. Let's choose the cut zero, but let's go even further. Let's add a camera. And now we can film this however we want. Close up, wide angle, dolly, top shot. You are James Cameron now. So let's also import like a sci-fi background and place it in here. Cool, but not James Cameron cool. <clears throat> let's add an environment light and also an awesome HDRI file to lighten our scene and directly choose it in the environment light. Now we're talking. And this is also where I'm going to leave you today. Because I think your minds are already blown. And yes, I see the comments. Yes, yeah, for sure, you could go even further. Also import the 3D skater in here or whatever you want and create your shots and scenes in the most creative way possible. So, let me know what you think about this workflow in the comments. Or was this too advanced for you? Anyways. I wish you a lot of creative freedom with Wonder Dynamics.